There you go. I'm wearing sunglasses inside because I want to be like Casey Neistat. Huge vlogger. Will it work? Of course it won't work. I'm wearing glasses because I didn't get enough sleep last night. Let's kick this in the guts. You want to be a YouTuber. I'm going to start off with all the reasons why you shouldn't. And then I'm going to let you into some secrets of how it can work if you really want to. But first I want to try and talk you out of it. Because being a YouTuber is a load of work. It's a load of fun. But it's more work. It's not a 9 to 5 job. It's seven days a week. Wake up in the morning, check your emails, check that the thumbnail's okay on your video, it's getting the right views. It just goes on and on. It's a monster. You've got to keep on feeding. Of course, if I tried to be like Casey Neistat, my channel wouldn't work. And if you try to be something you're not, it won't work. So number one rule is always be yourself. Let's get that out of the way and get to the negative. The negative is that it takes a lot more work than you think. Only about 1% of people actually keep their channels going after a year which is a crazy stat, and of that 1%, it's a ridiculously small amount that actually can make a living from it. Yes, you can get money from Google, from AdSense. Yes, you can have a Patreon where, you, if you're lucky enough to have some good bastards that will support you, might jump on board and put something towards it. Yes, you could sell your own music if you're a musician. Yes, you can sell merchandise. Yes, you could start any number of platforms like TipJar or Friends Only or something like that to maybe pull some money in, and you might get lucky and it might work. If you get a lot of reach, then you're going to become known as, a, as an influencer and people are going to want you to sell their products. But do you want to do that? So first of all, think about all that stuff. What is the other negatives? The negatives is pretty much what I've outlined. Work, work, and more work. You would be much better to do just a normal job if you want to do something that's going to bring money into your life because being a YouTuber will cost you to begin with. And finally, at the end, you might end up with surviving just. I know... Two YouTubers that do it professionally in New Zealand. There's more, but I know two. And in my big wide circle, that's not a lot of people. And I know a load of people that have started channels and it's gone absolutely nowhere. Right, that's some of the negative. Other negatives would be that you lose your privacy. And that's a big thing to consider. You go into public, everyone's going to know you. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people are going to know you, particularly if you go into your niche. For me, I'm into hunting and fishing. So if I go into the hunting and fishing shop every time, I'm banging into people that know me. Just can't do it without it. And in the street in general. Doesn't bother me. Some people hate it. You have to give those people your time of day because you're basically a public figure. So think about that before you kick into it. Right, let's look at the uh, the things. There's the how-to videos because you really need to know what sort of channel you're going to make if you're going to create a YouTube channel. Are you going to do how-to? That means like how to change a spark plug, how to make a coffee, how to fix the broken tap that's leaking, those how-to videos get a lot of views. That's one sort of type of YouTube channel you could make. You could have a YouTube channel that has ambient stuff going on, purely visual and sound, like a meditation channel, or rain falling in a rainforest and music, just peaceful, chill-out music, because a lot of people in big cities like to have that on when they've been in the office all day and come home and just look at something green that sounds nice and have nobody talking. You might want to do a vlog channel. You might want to like I'm doing now, this is a vlog. There's no editing. A vlog channel does have editing, but I don't do editing because I keep on rolling. If you're doing a vlog channel, you've got to know how to put your mind ahead so when you're speaking, you're not stopping all the time without the ums, the ahs, the you knows, and all that because people switch off very quickly. So that's lateral thinking. Are you good at lateral thinking? Can you bring something of value to the table that will keep people watching you, that will be engaging for them? Then you've got music channels, massive. So are you a band? Are you a musician? Are you an artist that wants to put your art out there? YouTube is a great medium for that, but it's bloody hard because there's only a tiny few at the very top that are succeeding. And this creates this feeling like I could do it too. And you're not always going to succeed. That's a reality. It's a very minute amount of musicians that are at the top. Tiny. Not to say it doesn't work and can't work. I, I'm not a great musician, but I sell music on there because of my channel. But it's something to consider. So that's another type. You might want to be a ceramic type uh, creator that's got videos that are just beautiful photography. It might be something like your tramping channel or a hiking channel. They're popular. You might be one of these tiny home channels or living on the road in my van channels and showing day to day. That's like a vlog channel mixed up with a lifestyle channel, which brings me to lifestyle channels. If you want to be a hunting channel or a fishing channel, let me warn you that already YouTube is clamping right down on that. They've recently just given Guido's Fishing Adventures channel a 30-day ban for 
harming animals. You've got to kill the fish if you're going to eat it. I'm a hunting channel and I've lost a lot of stuff. Very difficult. You can't show the gutting, the killing, which is all part of the hunting equation. So if that's the sort of route you're going down to, read their community guidelines. They are pretty harsh. Are you a channel that's catering to children or to adults? If you're catering to children, that's going to be very hard too because YouTube have come under, come under huge, oh, huge uh, financial fines from Copper for showcasing advertising to children. So they've divided that up now. Children, that means under 13 years of age or over. So decide on what your market is, what you're aiming for. Right, I'm going to fly through this quick. Let's just talk about gear. What you're hearing now is me talking on my Galaxy S21, the Ultra. No, I'm not sponsored by them. It's a good phone, so I'm telling it. So if you need to know a good phone, that's a good one to use. Better than iPhone because it has a pause, record, pause function. I'm not using it. I'm not pausing. But if I want to take a break, I can hit the pause button, drink my coffee, come back, and carry on. Something to consider. GoPro is fantastic. Weatherproof. Sounds not bad. You can change the size of your screen. I'd do everything in 1080p personally. Wouldn't worry about 4K. That's what most people are watching it on. So GoPro is not a bad go-to. If you're going outside into the bush, a Canon SX70 is the new one out. Power shot, great zoom. So for long distance stuff, animals and all that. Fantastic camera, around 800 bucks New Zealand. Once you get your channel, like your channel created on YouTube, think about your logo. Design it yourself if you haven't got too much money. Be creative or pay someone like Fiverr to create it for you. Better off to do it yourself. The thumbnails are the key thing in your video and the titles. So make sure your thumbnails, that's the photo everybody's going to click on, is something that's relevant to what you're doing. Clickbait, just you're wasting time, don't even do it. Something that shows what it's going to be. And in the first 30 seconds of your video, be engaging, get straight to the point. There's an old saying in making videos, kill your babies. That means you do all your filming, you've got all this great footage, I love that, I love that. Get rid of most of it and keep the 5% that's really something that's worth listening to, something that is going to give information. Kill your babies. Audio is something to consider. The audio here is a bit boomy, not great, but this is just a vlog, and I don't really mind, and you don't mind either. You can hear what I'm saying. It's clear. You're getting the message across. Lapel microphone would sound better. I would sound a bit deeper. Doesn't really matter. Cheap is a good way to start. Don't invest too much when you're starting off. Don't think I've got to get all this gear because you just don't. As far as editing goes, this editing software online, it's, it costs you nothing. Just go to free editing software. You'll find it's, there's about three or four really good ones out there right now. I won't say the names. I use Adobe Premiere, although this is going straight off my phone, straight to you without being edited at all. That is something which is important to know how to edit, and I would suggest keep, unless you're talking like this, keep every scene in your video like two to three seconds long. If it's not engaging, cut it out. Keep it so it's engaging. I'm going to keep this video very short because most of you probably have clicked off by now. Those that are still watching, it's going to take you a humongous amount of work. So when you're working each day, don't expect that all that work is going to give you a return straight away. It probably won't unless you hit the jackpot and have something really amazing that nobody else has ever thought of, nobody else has got. Just work with no expectation. And if you keep working, eventually something just might happen. Post on a regular time, a regular day, every, like once a month or once a week, say Tuesday, 7 o'clock, once a week. Once you get known better, you'll work out the times better with your population around you and those that watch you. If you're doing for local audience, I would suggest the evening people come home from work. 7, 7.30 is when I post mine. They're sitting down, they've had their meal, oh, let's watch a bit of old Clay Tool Stories. That's a good time to post. Biggest thing for it to be sustainable for you, is that you've got to enjoy it. Always speak your truth. Always be authentic. Don't try and be like somebody else. Be you, and that way there, everything will be sweet as, bro. Never bullshit. People can smell bullshit a mile off. And if you start to live your life to be a YouTuber, and you start doing things just for the channel, that's not sustainable. What I do is I do stuff, and I film it. And sometimes people get upset. Hey, where's all your fishing? I need some fishing videos. Or where's your hunting? I don't feel like hunting and fishing right now. Right now I feel like showing you me growing my wasabi. Well, that's boring. I'm sorry, but that's my life. People that really enjoy you for being you will come along for the ride whatever you do.
because they understand that you're honest, that you're authentic, you're yourself. And that's not always going to be pretty all the time. That means showing your life. And let's face it, life is horrible a lot of the time. And if you're a horrible person, show your horrible side. If you keep trying to be something you're not, it's not sustainable. Eventually the cracks will show and people will see through it and they'll, they'll leave you. You're much better to be your authentic self. None of us are perfect, so show your imperfect self. And also, keep things lighthearted. Don't get too serious. Just make it fun. And find the fun in your own life and bring that to your channel. Find the things that you enjoy, and people will be more engaged if you're enjoying it. If I'm cooking something and I'm really hungry, I only eat once a day. I'm so hungry, I'm actually dribbling while I'm cooking. I'm sure that people get a kick out of watching me going crazy before I get that steak into my mouth because they can feel the tension. And that's what YouTube should be. It should be real stuff, not stuff that's made up fake to try to entertain you. It should be something that's relatable to everybody. I hope this has been helpful. It's a short video for me. Uh, I'm going to now show you why I wore glasses. I had no sleep last night. The eyes are hardly awake. Let me go back on. Sorry about that. Not pretty. Be good. Can't be good. Be careful. And uh, see you in the next video. See you later.